So, I can only talk to you from a place of what I have lived. We can't tell you what I'm reading a book if I haven't lived it, if I don't believe it. So I can only tell you about where I am now and where I am hoping to get to. Because this whole financial freedom business is a process. And I want to share with you three of the keys, the keys that I am learning in this process in a very real way. So if you don't know where I come from, my mother is a teacher, my father is a taxi driver. I was Went to Mona Heights Primary School, but it just so happened that I was bright. And bright got me from Mona Primary to Camden College. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Terry. To UWE, to University of Edinburgh, to Big Job. I was PR manager at Digital for almost 10 years. I was sponsorship and communications manager at Grace Kennedy for all of their markets. For five years and then I left the work. I left the work to start my own business and when I did it I thought business people make money. <laughs> my motivation for leaving the work, couple of things. I recognized that we weren't making candy in Jamaica at all. Apart from one man who was making ice cubes. So I said, where is mango sweetie or June plum sweetie or jackfruit sweetie or guava sweetie or where paradise plum gone or why I have to give my goddaughter blue raspberry to eat? Because we don't eat raspberry in Jamaica and raspberry don't come in blue. <laughs> and that's what motivated me to leave my job being a marketer my entire life, now stepping into this new space of entrepreneurship. I don't know anything about making sweetie. I don't know how I'm gonna get it distributed. I don't know where the first scent is gonna come from to make these candies. But I quit my job before I had made the first candy. And I was chasing more than money. I was chasing joy. I was chasing the kind of satisfaction where I have this thing in my head and I now have this thing in my hand and now other people have this thing in their hand and they're paying me for it. And the joy that came along with that process. Now, one of the first keys that I realized, even while I was employed, that Bakramas a paycheck is not a bad thing. Sometimes you need a job. <laughs> Sometimes you need a job to finance the joy. When I was at Nichester, and uh, I decided that I wanted to go away to school to do my master's. I'm a hype, you know. They come play in every vacation, pretty car. I'm a hype. Cook, 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 eating out, all of these things. So I'm a broke. <laughs> broke on both. But now I wanted to go to school. I wanted to do my master's and I didn't have the money. And I put a big plastic box on my desk and people didn't work. And I buy up banana chips and cookies. And I take them freezer and I put Kisco in there. And I said, I'm selling things for $50. Anything you want, I can give it to you, and it's going to cost $50. Because that was how I was going to start raising money to finance my master's. And it was an honor system because I had to do the people at work, so I couldn't be there to make change all the time. So you take your biscuit and you put in your $50. You take your kiss cup and you put in your $50. And that money, it started to add up. And I would go across the road to JMB every day at the end of the day and deposit the day's sales. And I sold a pretty car. And I gave Digicel my resignation letter and they said, you know what, you work really hard. Take back the resignation letter and take a scholarship. And before this whole crowdfunding thing started, without shame, my 
email all my friends and say I want to go to school and I'm rock, make it tells them that <laughs> Some people gave it to me, and when you add up the thousand dollar, thousand dollar, plus the money from the fifty dollar box, plus the care money from the money from Digicel, when I went to GMB to ask them how much money I have now, they gave me a check of one point two million dollars. And that money paid for my first semester of school, I'm my first month's rent, I'm a plane ticket. I believe in multiple streams of income, wherever that comes from. And some people will say you're greedy. In my mind, there's a very big difference between greed and ambition. Greed will make your grandmother shield. Ambition is a different kind of thing. So even now, when I have my sweetie business and I write in the gleaner and I'm on Cliff Hughes show, and if you call me to MC tomorrow, I'm there, I'm ambitious. Who vex vex? I'm about the multiple streams of income. I also want to say that the benefit of holding down that job while you discover what that other stream of income is. The truth is, the steady paycheck comes the 25th every month. Good month, bad month. It comes with health benefits a lot of times. It comes with paid vacation. When you decide to pick up yourself and start your own company, success or failure is 100% dependent on you. So it's a really good idea to figure out what works, figure out what might be successful while you are employed to somebody else. Fair? The other key that I have discovered is that you want to support, you want to support yourself by being creative and getting curious. Be creative and get curious. So the only reason I knew that the candy company would have been a success was because I took a vacation day from my corporate job. And I started to go into pharmacies and supermarkets looking for a Jamaican made candy, and I couldn't find any. And I did some research online and recognized that Jamaica was bringing in seven and a half million US dollars worth of candy. That number has gone up to nine and a half million US dollars worth of candy. I we weren't making any, I we weren't exporting any. Someone said, hold on. There's a real business opportunity here. You can actually reach out to the Ministry of Finance and ask them for the import list. Ask them for the import list. Ask them, tell me what we are bringing in. Because if we're so hell-bent on reducing the import bill, what are we importing? And what on that list can I do? Can I make? If you ever see how much money we're spending on dog food, you can get some chicken scraps and skin and make dog food. No. The things on that list, not all of it take big machinery and excitement and whole heap of capital. Some of it we can do. So be curious to the point where you're fast. Search for the information. Find it wherever it is from people. And I say be curious and also be creative. So in deciphering, okay, what is that thing that's going to make me money? First of all, you have to look around and see if somebody else is doing it. One of the things I hate is when you go on a corner and you say 10 pan chicken man. How many of those pan chicken men actually make money? No one. Everybody has the pan chicken man. You got shorty, right? You got the Indian man on Red Hills Road, on um, Northside Plaza, right? Why are those other men selling pan chicken? Why are those other men not selling the best curry goats that Jamaica ever make? And another one doing the baddest pot of soup that ever make? And another one is the veggie man who you can get some good item food from.
from. And then it becomes a corner of Jamaican cuisine. And then another lady come on the corner and she make the best sweet potato pudding and the best bread pudding ever. So when you pick up your pan chicken and a plate of curry goat, you pick up a slice of sweet potato pudding from her and everybody makes money as opposed to just shouting. The me too doesn't help in carving your own financial future. You have to find that thing that you can do differently and do well and find a way to monetize that thing. So I will never make blue raspberry sweetie because I cannot make it as good as Jolly Rancher. And I will never make sour watermelon sweetie because I cannot make it as good as Skittles. But they can make a mango sweetie better than me. So I say get creative and get curious. My next product, I go to Bath and Body Works and I buy all these exotic sugar scrubs. Brown sugar and oils and you rub it up on your body and you feel nice after you bathe and you smell good. And I look on the bottom of the scrub and it's oil and sugar. And what do I use to make my sweetie? Oil and sugar. So I'm gonna make body scrubs, but I'm gonna make mango body scrubs and jackfruit body scrubs and juniper body scrubs. And there are other people who are making body scrubs, but I'm not gonna step in their turf. I'm not making coffee scrub because that's not my space. But guava and mango and juniper and jackfruit are my space. So think creatively. You also have to think creatively about how you finance the dream. How many people are in here in a partner? If you're in a partner, just put up your hand. And you use a partner by bed, I'm straight, I'm microwave. And all of us complain that we cannot find seed funding to start a business. What if you took the last draw in that partner so you don't own nobody no more? and you can take that partner draw and start a business. You can take that partner draw and take the whole period of the partner to plan. How am I going to multiply this $100,000 to become $200,000, become a million dollar? And you don't have to go to anybody and beg for the seed funding. It's a partner. It's something that all of us do all the time, not true? Perhaps you can get together with a few other women who have the same kind of dream and passion and intention and challenge, who want to start a business, can't find the funding. Five of you get together and start an entrepreneurship partner. So you each finance each other's businesses with seed funding and you hold each other accountable. So when you get your job, you can't run off and go buy the microwave because your sister will set to your oil. What's going on? I had to get creative with the funding of my business. When I wanted to start Sweetie, left the people in work, spent off all my money on research and development, pretty frank, branding, all kind of things, and I don't make one Sweetie yet. <laughs> so then I wrote, how am I going to finance this? And at the time, which was four years ago, almost, you could get a loan for a car, but you couldn't get a loan to start a business because you don't finance startups. We, you're kind of young. I don't know if you're going to be responsible with our money. You can't get a loan for a carnival costume unsecured. And it's still difficult to get a loan to start a business. So at the time, I had a car accident. I had a car accident and everybody wanted to finance my new car. And I said, no, I have insurance. I don't need you to finance my new car. I need you to finance my new business. And nobody wanted to do it. So we took the car And when I got the insurance check, that is what started the business. Be 
Because being in business is going to take creativity from you for everything. Not just the actual business that you start, but how that business is run is going to require creativity from you. So a key to success is going to be that you have to be creative in funding what you do. And the third key to success that I want to share with you is I want to dispel this myth that I've heard. They say that women don't regress financially. So that when a woman comes to a certain place in life, she never wants to or does everything not to regress. You used to live in a certain kind of house, you're not going to live in a lower house. You used to drive a certain car, you're not going to drive a lower car. I've come to dispel that myth. And a key to success that I will share that has failed me this whole process is that that myth has to be thrown far out the door. When I picked up this thing called entrepreneurship, I also picked up the reality that I couldn't do it by myself and I needed a team to do it with me. And that team must get paid a salary every month. And when I think about the fact that I have 12 people to pay every month, that if I don't pay them, them like going cut off. If I don't pay them, their children don't have lunch money. If I don't pay them, there's no roof over their head. I had to make some decisions. So when I used to drive my fancy champagne Honda CRV, if you look outside right now, it's a 2007 second hand fix. When I used to live in my fancy penthouse apartment on Waterloo, and I looked through the newspaper, and I realized what they're charging for rent, in Waterloo for a penthouse apartment can pay my mortgage in full. I moved into my boyfriend's rent house in Dunedin Park and I rented out the apartment. True something. I do it not because I'm trying to pad up the mattress. Because I'm not making money just for making money safe. I want to go to the Olympics in 2021. I want to travel. I want to experience new things. I want to employ more people. I don't only want to make sweetie hard candies. I want to make juju. I want to make lollipop. I want to do all kinds of things and all of those things take money. Money that my taxi father and my teacher mother don't have to gift me. Money that I have had to find a way to finance. So one of the very critical keys that I have discovered to this financial freedom is that sometimes you have to step back to move forward. And there's no shame in that. I want to remind us that this whole thing about financial freedom, and I want to go back to what Phil said, we're working to live and not the other way around. All of us know people who at the prime of their lives are not here anymore. Who put in the work and make the money and nine to five and ignore the family and hustle, 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 hustle. And they're not here. I don't know when I'm gonna go. You don't know when you're gonna go. And I have big dreams and one life. I have big dreams that scare me and one life. And one of the most powerful things that I have learned in this process is that nothing will happen unless I take action. Unless we do so. Last week, I may have recognized that I broke. And to sit down and wallow in the sorrow and cry and... How does that help you? How does that get you out of the position that you're in at that point? 
Ayana and I were in a course. And one of the most powerful things that we learned in that course is that you have to take action. You have to do something. And you either do it and it fail, and you learn, but there's also the possibility that you might do it, and it work, and you succeed. But the only way you're gonna know is if you take action. So the four keys that I will leave with you, number one, as they have multiple streams of income. Number two, as they get creative and get curious. Number three, sometimes it gets very dark before the dawn and that's okay. And number four is take action. Thank you ladies. Yes.